Buying a home, probably a goal for some in the new year, but it's time to ask the expert. Juliana Lydon back now discussing best practices as we head into a brand new year. And we want to talk about some general questions that swirl at the tail end of a year that certainly revolve around those resolutions and how we can actually stick to them. Because like they say in Seinfeld, anybody can just make resolutions, right. but it's keeping them. Yes. So how do we do that? That's good you say that because I was going to say related to this, don't just create something for the sake of doing it. We have to be committed. We have to be disciplined. You know that feeling when you're finally on the diet or you're finally into the space and it's yes. just, I mean, you are going to go no matter like what. Full speed. So you've got to really be disciplined. Otherwise, don't do it because you're just going to get frustrated. Exactly. And just because it's the end of a calendar year doesn't mean you have to put some weird pressure That's on right. yourself to do anything if I you agree. don't want to. Okay. I agree. So we did get a viewer question and this is from Gabe in Queen Creek. I am 84 years young today. Happy birthday, Gabe. Happy birthday. What's the best way for our youth to keep a resolution? Oh, asking on behalf of the youth. Oh, that's a good one. And I'd like to know how you keep yours also. Right. But what I would say about that is this is stuff that's learned right? Yes. So we as parents are role models and we teach our kids these types of things, you know, these, uh, you know, discipline and writing things down and follow through and holding accountability yeah, and stuff. Yeah, good habits. So really that's your opportunity to help them do that and really, you know, keep things going. I know that from the jump, my dad's favorite story to tell people is that I'm like a gold star student. Like I want my gold star at the end of the day. So yeah. I'm trying to achieve, you know, sometimes you fall short, but set the goal a little smaller for the next Next day so that you're not right. failing along the way. That is exactly okay. true. Okay. All right. Point. How how do we know if our goals are too big or too small? Well, you're going to know by the end of the year if you've kind of been failing off and on at sure. something, you know. Okay. So that's going to be your your real test, your marker. So again, that's your opportunity to go, okay, I'm going to really jump in big and I'm going to get this to happen. I say it's always best to go in smaller. Okay. Just like we talked about on the segment, I think it's really, really important. We want to feel like we're successful, you know, and can do it. And that Forbes study that we talked about earlier saying that 50% of people kind of give up in the first three months. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about accountability and you know, if it is a fitness goal, do, do you have like a gym buddy or a walking buddy, you know? Great, Rachel, those are great because that's absolutely true. So, mm -hmm. or you have a coach. <laughs> right. Right, a coach in all, but we, we need them all the time. It doesn't just have to be professional. Sure. So I love that you said a buddy. It's so fun if you can work out with your partner. My husband and I ride bikes every day. Nice. You know, whatever your thing is, holding yourself accountable with another person is fun. And so maybe doing that too, trying something new. Maybe mm -hmm. you, maybe you don't want to go to the gym; it's not your thing. But but biking mm -hmm. or Walking. hiking, rollerblading. I mean, so many. There's things. plenty of trails for this the taking. Yeah. And this time of year, yes. Okay, so for those who like to journal or keep a tally, keep score, kind of what I was alluding to with the gold star. What are some healthy ways to keep track? Is it simply writing it down on your whiteboard calendar or privately in a journal? I love to write stuff down okay. and they have, you know, it's, uh, you guys have probably seen, there's a lot of gratitude journals. They have sure. journals for everything. Yes. And I, as a coach too, I have people write down no matter what it is to keep track. Again, we're back to that accountability thing. Right. But when you're looking at healthy stuff, if they're talking about food, the, you know, the food diary, no matter what it is, I think when we keep track, it really helps. You'd be surprised. You go back and look like a week before and go, oh my gosh, I was way off. I didn't know it. Or, or look at what I've done or, or whatever the case may be, whatever's applicable. Yeah. Positive okay. or negative. I yeah. love it.